Good evening. I would like to take this opportunity uh, to introduce a renowned and widely known, if I want to say, widely known radiation oncologist across India, Dr. Chanchal Goswamiji from Ruby Hospital. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, as you know, sir, we have assembled here to have an interaction on this awareness activity, head and neck cancer, sir. Because we as a common people have a lot of questions circulating in the mind because of because if we can see most of the cancers are related to head and neck only. Thanks, sir. Thanks for your valuable time. Good evening, sir, once again. Thank you. So a lot of questions are circulating in the mind, sir. I'll start with the questions. I'm just representing from the patient's perspective, sir. Okay. So, coming to this head and neck cancer, sir, how common are this actually? And what is exactly this head and neck cancer, sir? Well, uh, normally by head and neck cancer, what we uh, mean is uh, a cancers of the oral cavity and oropharynx areas. So, basically, it uh, considers cancers of the oral cavity, means the tongue, the lip, the floor of the mouth, the buccal mucosa, the heart and the soft palate. And by oropharynx, we mean the tonsils, uh, the posterior lateral pharyngeal walls, the base of the tongue, the valicula. And of course, the hypopharynx also comes in, in that, which is, again, uh, the area of the upper part of the voice box, which is called the superglottic larynx, the glottic larynx, which is the voice of cords in itself, the lower part of it, the subglottic area, and of course, the uh, upper part of the esophagus uh, or feed, feeding tube, which is called the pyriform fossas and, and the hypopharynx areas. So all, all these things uh, encompasses head and neck cancers. There are other areas of head and neck cancers as well, like the paranasal sinuses, the ethmoid sinuses, the, ethmoid, uh, the uh, uh, maxillary sinuses and so on. These are also part of head and neck cancers. Again, mesopharynx is another area, but that is dealt with separately and thyroid cancers, which are dealt with separately. So normally head and neck cancers, by head and neck cancers, we mean squamous cell carcinomas of the oropharynx, oropharyngeal area, and the larynx and hypopharynx area. So that is what it is. And it is one of the most common cancers in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, it's the most common cancers among the males, uh, maybe, uh, the third ranking cancer among, amongst women, but overall it's, a, it's on the very high priority list of the Cancer Control Program of India, and it's one of, considered to be the number one cancer in the Indian subcontinent. So you said that it's related to male as well as females also, sir? You yes, can see the percentage. Yes, yes. Majority are males. Uh, I would say that in males, uh, if, you, if you divide the entire head and neck cancers, Almost 70% of them develop in males and 30% may develop in them. But women are not uh, devoid of head and neck cancers because our women are also uh, addicted to many of this uh, tobacco and uh, alicarnate, uh, beetle leaf uh, kind of things, which can also cause this head and neck cancers. So you are basically saying this major of the parts will be oral cancers, sir. Oral. oral cavity and oropharynx, these are the two areas, as well as larynx, larynx and hypopharynx. So all these things, uh, oral cavity is the commonest area, but oropharynx, larynx and hypopharynx are also major areas. What type of people or who are more at risk, sir, generally, for this oral cancer? Well, essentially, uh, one group of people would be more at risk, those who are addicted to tobacco, which may be smoking tobacco or chewing tobacco in whatever form. Those who are addicted to alicarnate chewing, supari uh, jisko kehte hain, and uh, brittle, uh, that is paan, uh, tambaku, ye sab jo lete hain. So they are most uh, at risk of developing uh, oral or uh, oropharyngeal cancers. Apart from this, uh, bad oral hygiene uh, is an important aspect. Sharp teeth, if you have sharp teeth, which uh, abrases your tongue and all, that can also lead to oral cancers. Frequent uh, tongue biting, frequent uh, cheek biting can also lead to uh, oral cavity and oropharyngeal cancers. There are other types of cancers like the HPV related cancers, which are a rare entity in the Indian subcontinent, more commonly seen in the West, 
which is related to human papilloma virus and mostly uh, associated with people uh, in, in, involved with oral uh, sexual activities and so on and so forth. But other than this, mostly oral hygiene, bad oral hygiene, uh, sharp teeth, uh, and of course, tobacco related. These are, plus there are certain precursor lesions of head and neck area commonly seen called erythroplasia and leukoplakia. And if they are kept unattended, leukoplakia is essentially white patch which develops within the oral cavity and erythroplasia is reddish patch. These can, over the period of time, can, can develop uh, cancers. Uh, so these are also important areas which needs to be uh, looked at. So all kind of tobacco preparations leads to oral cancers. Well, whether it is a smoking tobacco or a chewing tobacco or you brush teeth with tobacco, uh, whatever it is, so pan masala, everything, there is no segregation and you cannot say that this is better than the other or this is less uh, harmful. There is nothing of that sort. So every single thing and tobacco in, when in combination with alcohol is even more harmful. Alcohol plus tobacco. Yeah. Because it is talking about oral hygiene, no, sir. Mm. That those who drink tends to smoke more while they are drinking. So uh, there are some people who do not smoke, but they smoke while they drink. So that causes uh, even even uh, bigger risk. Okay. So you were talking about this oral hygiene, no, sir. Uh, people are uh, some uh, uh, general query. The people who is uh, chewing tobacco on regular basis, but he is brushing his teeth hygienically uh, regular basis. So there is any uh, link to this, sir? Because well, a general well, by, common by chewing tobacco, what you cause tobacco has some own carcinogens. They have a lot of carcinogens. Carcinogens okay. means uh, products which can de uh, develop cancer. So whether you brush your teeth or not is not an important issue. You need to brush your teeth because of, it's a part of your uh, yes. oral hygiene. You need to uh, rinse your mouth after every food. You need to brush your teeth. You need to uh, keep your mouth hygienic. That's quite natural because otherwise, apart from oral cancer, what you can have, you can have a bad breath. So a friend of yours or your girlfriend who's come, you, if you come close to your girlfriend, and if you smell badly through your mouth, your girlfriend will uh, push up. So brushing teeth and keeping your oral hygiene is good enough. That is a different issue. And using tobacco as, as, a, uh, as an addiction is another thing. And tobacco uh, in whatever form is harmful for your uh, oral cavity and oral cavity can cause cancer. And it has been proved beyond that. Sir, what about this HPV virus? Which uh, how does it cause us to this? Well, virus? as I as I said, I briefly mentioned that uh, that uh, certain head and neck cancers are related to human papilloma virus. Now, human papilloma virus, as you are all aware, is related to cervical cancer in women, and human papilloma virus is basically a virus which uh, resides on male genitalia, penis, and it causes uh, genital wart in the penis uh, for males. Now, during intercourse, it can get transmitted to the female vagina and, and can cause cervical carcinoma with the HPV. Similarly, if you indulge in oral sex, it can get transmitted to the changes over there in your mucosa and can cause oropharyngeal cancers like the two cervical cancers. So certain oropharyngeal cancers are related to uh, HPV virus infection and that is usually uh, propagated through oral uh, intercourse. Even this also is a genetic hereditary, sir, if a uh, person... Not, 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 at all. not at all. It is not a hereditary cancer. Hereditary cancers primarily are not hereditary. It is basically a lifestyle disease and mostly prevented by avoiding tobacco and keeping good hygiene and avoiding oral uh, sex. What could be the general signs and symptoms of this cancer? Well, head and neck cancers, uh, uh, the best part of it, the beauty of head and neck cancer is that since it is in the most functional area of our body, because our mouth, we speak, 
we eat, we do our facial expression. So anything over there, the slightest of uh, changes makes uh, or impacts your quality of life. If you have an ulcer, a small aptus ulcer because of vitamin deficiency or a small tongue bite, makes your life miserable because it becomes painful. You cannot swallow your food. Uh, so similarly, in cancer, Small lesions can make a lot of symptoms. The commonest symptoms are pain while swallowing. Uh, apart from that, you can have difficulty in swallowing and difficulty in speech. Your speech might get altered. You can have uh, excessive salivation in your mouth. So your saliva may drool out from your mouth uh, because of the lesions. So these are the most common symptoms of oral cavity cancers. Uh, coming to uh, laryngeal lesions, you can have a change in voice, you can have difficulty in swallowing uh, food, you can have a hoarseness of your voice, uh, you can have a nagging cough. Uh, so there are many, many symptoms which can occur in, in uh, head and neck cancer areas. And the other most important thing is it can be very easily seen because while we are brushing our food or when, while we are washing our face, we can look at the mirror, open our mouth and see. And if there is anything unusual, it can easily come, come uh, in our in our uh, vision. The other thing is that a small lesion in your tongue or your buccal mucosa, your, your sensation is such that your tongue tends to go to that side. So if you have something in the buccal mucosa, every time you eat or you talk, your tongue goes towards the buccal mucosa. Or the tongue, uh, pinches when you talk. So I think these are the commonest side symptoms and since this is a very functional area of the body, uh, the symptoms are easily noticed unless and until you are too ignorant and keep on ignoring those symptoms. Head and neck cancers essentially should be diagnosed very early. Unfortunately, in our country, we see a lot of advanced head and neck cancers primarily because uh, either the patients ignore the symptoms or they go on to alternate medicines and seek help from people who are not trained in dealing with cancer or not trained in giving proper advice. So they go into a lot of quackery and alternative medicines and go, go on trying a lot of things just for the simple sake of things that they will have to get a biopsy and they are scared of the biopsy and with biopsy and so on and so forth, and thereby they actually clear the disease and come into the advanced disease. It can be detected through blood, sir, this oral cancers? Because uh, blood, uh, oral head, head and neck cancers cannot be, it is not, uh, it's not a hem, uh, hematological cancers that you can detect it through blood like we do in uh, leukemias or something, some other things. So it has to be by inspection, by proper investigation, and a biopsy or a cytology. So these are the three most important paramount uh, ways to diagnose head and neck cancer. What could be the treatment options uh, sir, available? Well, the uh, uh, head and neck cancer in the earliest stage, that is stage one, stage two are absolutely curable. So it can be cured in majority of the cases by surgery. Uh, in certain instances, say for instance, in elderly patients who are not fit for surgery, it can be cured by radiation, sometimes by concurrent chemo radiation, but not yet. normally in early stage, we do not do concurrent chemo radiation, but otherwise radical radiation and uh, or surgery can cure majority of stage one uh, head and neck cancers. Uh, stage two, mostly uh, surgery and combination of uh, radiation. Stage three, of course, not all of them are curable. If I say that stage one, stage two, almost 90% of them are curable. In stage three, I would say 70% to 80% of them are curable, which are called locally advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck area. There, the treatment is usually a combination of chemo radiation or uh, chemo bio radiation or if they are, say for instance, some of them may have kidney disorders and are flat it up in, uh, ineligible, they can be treated with biologicals plus radiation. Uh, some hypopharyngeal lesions and laryngeal lesions, sometimes 
And in this sort of a situation, a locally advanced agent can be given upfront chemotherapy, which is called neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and thereby after the chemotherapy, the organ can be preserved. So you can do organ preservation treatment by means of giving concomitant chemo radiation after that or organ preservation surgery. So these are areas. Of course, stage four head and neck cancers are not curable. They are essentially not curable, but they are treatable and they can uh, be treated and the patient's quality of life can be maintained and patient reported outcome can be analyzed and they can go on for a long period of time. Head and neck cancers do not die very easily because the disease do not metastasize to the other parts of the body so easily as it does in lung cancer or other cancers and so on and so forth. So head and neck cancers essentially remains above the clavicular area most of the time. So by local treatment and good systemic treatment, you can control majority of the diseases. And of course, now immunotherapy has come in a big way in head and neck cancers. And it has been done in advanced cancers, in also uh, areas where you can advance cancers either in later lines or in first line along with chemotherapy. And uh, so these are new developments in head and neck cancer. Okay, so whatever the treatments you have suggested, sir, these treatments may affect the ability of the patient, um, uh, patient to eat or swallow. Ideally speaking, uh, the, the treatment is considered to be a successful treatment when you control the disease at the same time, you, you restore the patient's functions. So that is the most successful treatment. To do that, the patient has to pre present in an early stage. If you are an early stage disease, a stage one, stage two disease, your disease can be controlled and cured. At the same time, your function can be preserved. So you can have a normal swallowing, you can have a normal speech, and so on and so forth. And your facial geography does not change. But if you come with an advanced disease where you need to do a lot of mutilating surgeries and, and, and reconstructuring of the facial structures, there, of course, the function can become uh, a little difficult to be preserved. So you can have a little altered speech or altered swallowing. Sometimes you need a tracheostomy, a hole over here to breathe through it. But those are essentially for advanced diseases, locally advanced diseases in advanced. So as I said, when your disease is detected early, you have the highest possible rate of cure, as well as almost 100% certainty of preservation of function. In advanced stages, uh, your, your survival goes down, no doubt about that, but still your function preservation can be there. But in some cases, when we, we undergo, uh, patients have to undergo mutilating surgeries and all, there the function can be a little compromised. And, uh, uh, when you are talking about the treatments, or what could be the possible long term effects of this treatment? I mean, this is well, essentially, surgery doesn't have a lot of long-term uh, treatments, really, except for the disfigurement part of it. Sometimes you can have uh, dryness of your mouth because of surgery or certain defects in the in the in the organs uh, which are seen. Radiation can have some long-term side effects, especially serostomia, as we call dryness of mouth and loss of taste, which takes a long time to come back. Sometimes. They do not come back at all. Uh, it also happens that way. There can be some temporary side effects like blackening of the skin on the outer surface, but those are all transient and they go off in a good period of time. Chemotherapy can have recurrent side effects like uh, the, the symptoms of chemotherapy or adverse event of chemotherapy, like nausea, vomiting, lowering of blood counts, mucositis, uh, swallowing difficulty. But again, these are all temporary. So with chemotherapy cycles, they come and go. Uh, immunotherapy normally, you know, the side effects of immunotherapy are entirely different. They are immune-related side effects like the yeah, immune-related endocrine side effects like thyroiditis, immune-related nephritis, immune-related gastritis, or GI toxicities, colitis, immune-related uh, 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 pneumonitis. But these are not so common as we see with others, and they can be treated. Uh, if you are careful enough, you can keep a watch of it and keep a thought of it. So none of these are long-term side effects, and none of these are permanent side effects. Do you, uh, do you think, sir, any patient need follow-up tests for this? To... Well, all, all head and neck cancers uh, need follow-up, uh, and, and follow-up is 
is essentially very simple in having a form that says. The most important part of the follow up is the clinical examination. So you look at the thing or inspect it, or sometimes you may require investigations like fiber optic laryngoscopy or CT scans, etc. But otherwise, you essentially require an inspection and a chest x ray in majority of the head and neck cancers and an occasional imaging like a PET CT or a CT scan or MRI and a fiber optic laryngoscopy to look into the inside of the head and neck. Sir, is there any rehabilitation support center nowadays? Hospitals are uh, options well, available most, to most, the patient. Most tertiary cancer centers have some sort of rehabilitation. I have seen it in all major uh, hospitals. Basically, uh, they are called occupational therapists. And here, uh, all the head and neck can cancers, there are two, three things of rehabilitation. One is uh, the denture, preparation of the dentures and, and making their facial contour proper, that is one of the rehabilitation. The other is speech, swallowing, and voice rehabilitation. So these are the three important things which needs to be done. So your voice training is to be important. Uh, speech rehabilitation, swallowing rehabilitation, and, and of course, sometimes if you have a tracheostomy, you can be uh, put in a voice box and you can have an artificial voice where you need to be trained how to speak with the artificial voice. Okay, so key take home message for the common people. Well, uh, the key take home message for us Indians is one important thing that head and neck cancer is a highly curable disease and it's a lifestyle disease. And by lifestyle disease, I mean that it can be prevented. Lifestyle disease are usually prevented. And how do you need to prevent it? The most important thing is. You need to have good food, that is good proportions of vegetables and fruits in your diet. You can be a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian, doesn't matter. You can have either of them. There is no proof that non-vegetarian non food can cause this cancer. But the most important thing is that you have to shun your habit of tobacco, arica nut, and bitter chewing, pan masala. Uh, uh, these has to go and you need to, and it, any form, smoking, chewing, brushing, you all these things have to go. And you need to keep your mouth hydrated always, have good oral hygiene, have regular food, and essentially inspect your mouth very often. And if there is any uncertain thing in your mouth or swallowing or anything, any nagging symptoms, the symptoms which I have said, which doesn't get cured by meeting, uh, meeting your physician in 15 days to one month time, immediately go to a big tertiary center and get yourself checked for head and neck cancer uh, things. And do not, please, do not, do not, do not go into alternative medicines for this sort of disease where there is no standard of care treatment for this head and neck cancers. The standard of care treatment for head and neck cancers, the scientifically established treatment for standard of cancer is for head and neck cancer, for that matter, any cancer exists only with modern medicine and nothing else. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the valuable time and enlightening us through this uh, head and neck cancer awareness, sir. And also clarifying some common doubts on the common people. Most Thank you very much. It's my privilege to be a part of it and do my bit to, to enlighten the common people and my fellow countrymen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.